Well, good morning all and welcome to the October Development and Environmental Services Committee meeting. Four items on the today. Um, first up, we will deal with apologies. I believe we've got one from Director Matt Pringle. Yeah, the Director of Environmental Services, Matt Pringle. And Good evening. Any other apologies? No. Would someone like to move, uh, move that we accept? Moved by Councillor Watts. No. Secondly, Councillor Campbell. All in favour? Aye. Carried. Uh, the adoption of the previous minutes from the August meeting. So I'd like to move that they're a true and accurate reflection of that meeting. I think we've seen, yeah. Moved yeah. again by Councillor Watts, seconded by Councillor Campbell. All in favour? Yeah. Carried. Public participation. I believe we have two participants today. Um, as per usual, we will um, we will place those at the appropriate moment when we discuss each application. There are no site inspections. We'll get straight into the business. Uh, excuse items. me, Mr. Chair. The interest. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Do we have any declarations of interest? There being none. Thank you, Mr. GM. Which takes me back to item six on our agenda, which is business items. First one is DESC 10.1. These are the uh, replacement units up at Liverpool Street in Murrundi. Normally I'd hand over to Matt, but today I'll hand over to Christine. Okay, thank you. So this um, application is for the replacement of two units um, owned by council um, in the um, in Murrundi. The joined units were burnt by fire um, two years ago and where this application is for the demolition of the existing um, structures and replacement with two units. Um, the application was on public exhibition for two weeks, but no submissions were received. Being a council owned um, application, the assessment has been done by an external consultant. Um, a copy of their report and the recommended conditions are attached to the report. Thank you. I've, um, I'll, I'll go around the room as I usually do. Councillor Campbell, do you have any comment on that? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Uh, Jim, really, other than the fact that I'm very pleased to see this matter progress, it has gone on for a long time, but I'm sure the residents up there and the, uh, uh, not only the residents, also the town of, of Murrundi will be very pleased to see it progress. So I'm very happy to support it. Yeah, I think Councillor Brown will be pleased to see this development application in. Um, Councillor Abbott, any comment? I have no. no? Councillor Watts? No, no, no. No, I, I have either, so I'm, if someone would like to move. Seconded by Councillor Abbott. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Barry's. So we move swiftly into DESC 10.2. This is the use of the cafe at um, Plants on Main. I believe we have a public participant. Yes, I can see her up on the screen. Um, I will. Uh, I'll hand over to Christine, and then we will. Then we'll go to go to you, Linda, on screen. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. I'm not sure if you can hear me. We can hear you perfectly. Excellent. Christine. Okay. So, development application 38 of 2020 is for commercial alterations, additions, uh, and the additional use of a cafe at 51 Main Street, Scone. The current building. Um, contains a plant nursery and the application is to provide a cafe within that existing building um, and also for some uh, minor alterations to the external of the building and some advertising signs. The development application was on public exhibition for two weeks and one submission was received. Um, hence the reason why it's coming to the, uh, the DNA committee meeting. The assessment and, recommend, uh, and recommended conditions and a copy of that submission are attached. Um, the main points in the submission were to do with traffic 
parking privacy and noise associated, associated with the intensification of the development. Um, the recommendation is approval subject to conditions of consent. Thank you, Christine. Linda, would you like to... Um... Um, I'm not sure, but I'm led to believe that um, the complainants were renting across the road from us um, and the building has recently been sold and they have left. So um, the noise factor, I we have a, our hotel directly behind it, so I don't quite understand that the people are coming and going constantly. I'm not sure that a, a, a little coffee shop is going to uh, make too much noise. Um, and parking, I submitted, our, our TILA actually records how many customers we have between a certain period of time in a day and um, uh, I think there was 119 on one particular day between the hours of nine and four and there didn't seem to be, appear to be any road rage to my knowledge or any parking difficulties. So um, that is probably all I've got to say about that. Great, thank you. Would uh, any of the committee like to question the, or have any questions or comment for oh, our just, public uh, participant? Uh, thank you, Linda. That was, um, it's, it's very exciting. I just um, want to ask you on, um, in your statement of environmental effects and the um, dining orders are not consumed, utilising the existing pre-packaging will be provided on disposable plates and drinks in disposable cups. Will they be compostable? Yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you, that's great. And then I have a question for council, so that's later, or I can ask it now. Um, oh, it's it yes, it's to do with this. So um, on page 36, um, we talk about when the building's happening. Um, uh, the, on page 36, uh, point 10 C, a garbage receptacle will be fitted with a tight fitting lid for the reception of all food scraps and papers. Will we, because this is about time council had its own compost, so when, will we start thinking about that? I mean, I, I understand that's one of the um, requirements that we need to do, and that makes sense. But when will we um, have a compost system that we won't be sending this garbage, rubbish, to the tip? Because this will be landfill. So it's got nothing to do with the renovation. It's just my question about compost and council. Thank you. I will have, I'll take that one and, and find an answer for you. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I think this is marvellous. Thank you. Um, I just, I've got a couple of questions around uh, what Ms. Ms. Sharps actually said, Linda. Um, I, and I had a little bit of trouble hearing you, so if I've missed that you've said this, my apologies. Just in relation to parking, um, with the trucks across the, um, the driveway. Are you aware this is happening or has it happened? Um, it, ha it has happened and we have addressed the parking. Um, we have recently um, rented the paddock, which is presently owned by the Rossingtons, and we are trying to um, encourage all our truck drivers to ring us prior to parking and, and we're putting our staff cars along there so that they can be moved in time for um, trucks to park along in, a, in that area. Okay, did you, um, I just wanted, did you have a discussion with Andrew about it? No. Okay. And we are, no that's all right. I just, um, I, I understand her concern with her children, but if that's been addressed, that's fine. Thank you. He's actually moved from, from that address. Thank you, Lena. Sorry, any other comment, Councillor Watson? Yeah, um, just yeah, one. Yeah. Um, thank you for your presentation. I'm just, you, you mentioned about trucks, but I, um, are those trucks over six metres? Because I didn't think they were allowed to park in that, in that area anyway. 
uh, if there'd be only be a very short time for deliveries or something. So is that correct that they're, they're larger trucks? Um, occasionally that there are some uh, larger trucks, but um, they we encourage them to come between 7.30 and, um, and 8. And, um, but most of them are only here for three to five minutes. Um, okay, and and you're quite happy with the um, the cafe, the actual cafe recommendation too. I beg your pardon, I didn't quite understand that question. Um, I thought the additional use of the, of the cafe. I, I'm very keen to see as many businesses start up in Scone and to continue, because um, um, so I uh, I just find that. If we tend to um, reduce their their um, improvement, etc., that that we really want to get people back into Scone, so that's why I'm keen to see a development such as this go ahead. Yes, yes. Well, I figure if I'm open on the weekend, I would like as many excuses for customers to walk through the door and use my business. <laughs> Very good. So without further ado, do I have a mover? Uh, moved by Councillor Abbott, seconded by Councillor Watts. All those in favour? Aye. Against? It's carried. Thank you. And thank you for your time too and participation. Okay. If we may leave now if that's all right. <laughs> That moves us into DESC 10.3, an application for an extra hour's trading at the McDonald's on the northern side of town. Uh, Christine, I'll hand over to you. Okay, so development application for 2020 for the extension of trading hours uh, was originally considered by this committee um, in August. At that time, the application was for 24 our trading. Um, the, at the meeting, the application was deferred. The proponent has now amended the application to not be for 24 hours, but to extend the hours to be opening at 5 a.m. rather than at the moment, the approval is to open at 6 a.m. The original application received a number of submissions However, the amended application to open an hour earlier did not receive any submissions during the um, public exhibition period. The recommendation is for approval to um, extend the trading hours to open at 5 a.m. Thank you very much. It's your turn, Councillor Abbott, if you'd like to start. No, no comment, no. Councillor Watts. Excuse me if I'm, um, did I read oh, somewhere this was? Sorry, I'm terribly yeah. sorry, we have a public participant. We do. <laughs> sorry, 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 your turn. You have the floor. That's all right, thank you guys. Um, no, I do appreciate um, having a moment of your time this morning to be able to speak and present. Uh, mainly just wanting to endorse the council officer's report and recommendations. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant McDonald's Australia this morning to address the committee. Um, as has been noted already, the proposal put forth today has changed form since the last time the application was before council with the proposal now only seeking that 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. trade. Uh, at the last council meeting, the August council meeting, a supplementary planning information letter was circulated and it provided a planning assessment and merit for the updated proposal. The amended application is considered to alleviate the concerns previously fostered and provides an outcome to solidify the existing 5am to 6am hour of trade we are currently operating under the Environmental Planning and Assessment COVID-19 Development Extended Operation Order 2020. Uh, the Scone McDonald's has operated the 5am to 6am trade since the 13th of July under this order and there's been no complaints received. Uh, this has provided additional employment opportunities for the crew members of the SCONE operation and is proving successful. Again, just want to reiterate the fact uh, that we endorse the council officers' recommendations and report and 
open to any questions from the committee. Thank you, and uh, I think we have one looking at Councillor Watches. We do have one. Um, from my understanding, this has been through a process back and forwards to Council, um, and I note in the conditions it's saying this is still a trial. Am I correct in, in saying that, or have I read that incorrectly? No, that, that's, that's correct. It is a 12 months trial from the date of the consent. So we're looking at 30th November, which would be the day after the council meeting, to 30th November, 2021. I'd like to move that we've been through this process three times now. Uh, we didn't get any um, feedback from the community this time. And I think we just approve with the five to 6 a.m. extension without another trial period. I think the trial period was done during COVID. Well, it has been and is continuing to be done during COVID. So I'd like to move that way. Mr Chair, I'd like to second. I think the trial period has been over and that we should just approve it. It's, it's, it works and works well. Uh, and it also attracts more business back into town, which I'm very keen to see. So I believe we should re remove the trial and just, just approve it. I'd be, I'm happy to second um, your motion, uh, Councillor Watts. I'm not entirely sure um, why we would... I know, I understand that we've been back and forward. Does, is the proponent happy with the amended motion? With your uh, motion? Yes. Yeah, so we are, well, are happy with the amended motion to just seek permanency. I do agree with the fact that the COVID order has provided us the opportunity to just have somewhat of a trial and it has proven successful so far. Okay, all right, thank you. I'm happy, I'm happy. Thank you, everybody. Who am I to disagree then? So we have a mover and a seconder. All those in favour of the amended motion? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. And that moves us into our last item, which is DESC 10.4, which is the carport at Everly Court on an orchid block. Christine, I'll hand over to you. Okay, so development application 75 of 2020 is for a carport at 40. Court Scone. The, um, the application is being referred to the DNE because it varies from part 4B.2 of the development control plan in regards to the side setback and the maximum width of 6.5 metres, which exceeds the width of six metres at the front of the carport. Um, an assessment has been made. The, it was placed on public exhibition between 10th and 24th of July this year, and no submissions were received by council. A copy of the planning assessment and recommended conditions are attached and the recommendation is for approval subject to conditions. Does anyone have a comment about this one? Councillor Watts? Very short comment. Um, I think everyone's entitled to some kind of canopy for their car or whatever. It's just un that they've got such a unusual shape block, but I don't, I don't see any issues with um, it actually going ahead and support the recommendation. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I, agree with you, I, I am too. I, I think if you look at the at the aerial photograph, you can see that the neighbour already has a carport that looks suspiciously close to the, to, to the line, and uh, and the and the new carport is going to be um, screened from view um, for that neighbour by two trees and his own shed. So I um, I really have no no concerns about this one at all, and I'm be happy to move it from the chair if we have a seconder. Councillor Watts, all those in favour? Against? That's carried. Which brings us to um, Councillor Questions. So, um, it's uh, Christine, just one for you from me. I mean, it's my understanding that there's going to be a couple of items going straight to the Council meeting rather than through the committee. Could you just perhaps inform the committee on, on what those are and uh, why we're taking that step? which I'm entirely comfortable with. Okay. But just, just to let the other committee members know. So there's 
three reports that, or applications that it's proposed will go straight to the council meeting rather than come through the DE committee. Um, the reason for that is for assessment period times. If we wait until the next DE committee and then go to council, it's another four weeks before those um, proponents get their developments assessed. The, one of the development applications is for 131 Kelly Street, Scone, which is the council proposal for the old Scone sports store. Um, it's been, an assessment has been made by a external consultant of that application. So we're hoping to have a report to the next council meeting regarding that. The second one is for the Golden Fleece Hotel, the conversion into uh, to a motel as units. Uh, the assessment for that one is currently also being undertaken by an external consultant, but we haven't received that assessment back yet. So it will depend if we receive that back in time to get a report to the next council meeting. And the third application is for the service station next door to McDonald's in Kelly Street, which has come before the DNA committee before, which um, is now ready to go back to um, council. So, we're hoping to get a report directly to the next council meeting. I, I just have a question in relation to so they'll go to the council meeting and then they'll go on public exhibition. Is that so that we can get them out sooner or they rather have, than wait for the month for the DNA? I understand that bit, but they would all have to go on public exhibition, wouldn't they? They have all been on public exhibition okay, prior so that, to the assessment taking Okay, place. so this is about approval, so it's just skipping the base. Yep, that's fine. Um, just, I'd like to ask a question in relation to the service station. Um, they had to make changes though, didn't they? The service station, so that, that doesn't have to go back on public exhibition? I'll have to double check. If it has been back on public exhibition, it may have because that, been. That was quite contentious, if I remember. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy um, fast-tracking that one. Uh, Mr. Chair, it, it won't be it won't come before council unless all the proper procedures have happened. So, okay. if it needed to be re-advertised and it's coming back to council, it's been re-advertised. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have you have to do that. So, it, it won't be before the council unless all the advertising periods and whatever requisite requirements have been done. It the putting it straight up to council has nothing to do with shortcutting anything other than trying to get them out the door. Um, we've committed ourselves to a, let's call it an approval acceleration program as part of a project. In other words, to lower our processing times, that does not imply any sort of shortcutting of any statutory requirements. You simply can't do that. Okay, that, thank you. That, that is comforting only because I do remember it was quite contentious, but thank you for that. Yep. Thank now, you. whatever has to happen, has to happen. The going straight to council is basically just to give the applicants, as long as everything's occurred correctly, it just means the applicants basically get their approvals a month earlier than they would have normally. It is purely a planning, processing, acceleration. No, no shortcuts on any statutory requirements. Thank you. If we could just call it the uh, assessment processing, acceleration rather than approvals processing. I hate presupposing approval. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Now, I've asked my question. Are there any other questions around the room? Yes, Councilor I have Abbott. a long-winded one. No. So, it's, and I, so I'll get to my question, but first I want to just mention, we have new information about Wilson Memorial Hospital in Murrundi. The National Trust has identified it as an important building and they are now listing it in their, in their register of buildings to protect. Now, apparently, Wilson Memorial Hospital was designed by the renowned government architect, Mr. George McRae, who also designed the Queen Victoria building and the lower and top entrances of Taronga Park Zoo, among many other buildings. They're not all left, but we actually have one in our shire. 
The State Library submission request done by the Upper Huntershire Council was a sound submission, yet it was refused because of a cover letter provided by Hunter New England Health, which raised issues of lack of integrity and problems really only associated with the new extensions, which can be demolished and which are going to be demolished and we will get a lovely hosp new hospital. So my question on behalf of the Murrurundi community is can council resubmit the state listing application as soon as possible now that we all know that there has been recognition of the Wilson Memorial Hospital's importance by the National Trust. For, by way of further explanation, the Murrurundi Arts and Crafts Council are seeking to use it as their base and gallery and the old hospital is in very good condition with a new roof. There seems to be a major imbalance of power between Hunter New England Health and the wishes of our community in Murrurundi. They have known of the community's desire to preserve this building since consultation commenced. Murrurundi community member Mr Ray Hines tells me that he met with three project team members a year ago this is with Hunter New England Health, prior to anything being locked in, and they admitted to him their heritage investigation was inadequate. My next question is, should Murrurundi history, indeed the Shire's history, be lost because of that error? Could we please um, do this, redo the submission as soon as possible? We did do a really good one before. It, do we even need to take out an injunction? Because I know there is talk of demolishing it quite quickly. Thank you. That's my question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, just that one. Um, it, yes, it was just that one. Very good. Yes. Councillor Campbell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, that concludes the October DE. Thank you all for your time and input and help. Much appreciated as ever. Well done, Christine. Thank you. Thank you. And very able, very able deputy. <laughs>